Hi everyone, Bridget Air here with All About the Grace and it's Ash Wednesday. I'm actually recording this on Ash Wednesday so depending on when you see this uh, it might look weird because I've got ashes on my forehead. Well today I want to give you uh, a couple tips on fasting and in the season of Lent uh, we're fasting and the reason we're fasting is because the scripture that is for the mass readings today is Joel from the Old Testament, Joel 2.12. And it's, re, it's the scripture says, return to me with your whole heart. And that really repentance is not just being sorry for your sins. That's part of it. But repentance is really turning your turning your life back to God. If you've turned away from God, to turn your life back to God. And that's really what Lent is about. So I've been listening to Father Al Lauer. I listen to his uh, daily uh, bread radio. And so I've been listening to like a five-part series on fasting. Uh, fasting is really specifically limiting your intake of food and water. So I did a video on fasting and I talked about different ways you could fast. But, but if you're going to be in the strictest sense, fasting is really about food and water. Uh, limiting the intake of food and water. But other things that you could, I don't know, I guess abstain from would be, uh, you know, gossiping or digital media. And, and that would be giving up stuff. So, I, I, actually, there is a difference between those two, which I didn't think there was, so I just want to correct that. So, fasting, in the strictest sense, is limiting the intake of food and water. And then, giving up stuff would be like, you know, not watching TV, or giving up digital media, or um, giving up some other vice. And uh, when I went to Mass today, I went to St. Elizabeth Seton with uh, Father Will Summerlin, who is a young priest there. He's an associate pastor. His homily was really great. And it was about um, when you give up something for Lent, it should be something that's relevant. <laughs> and it, it shouldn't be something just arbitrary. So he gave the example that he heard a priest say to him that someone they knew gave up watermelon for Lent. But the guy who gave it up didn't really, watermelon wasn't really anything that was difficult for him to give up, which was really kind of funny. Everybody laughed. Um, but then you can be really, really ridiculously stringent and give up something that's just really super hard to give up. I mean, over the top hard. And so what Father Will was saying Father Will Summerlin was saying was that we really need to do something or give something up that's really inhibiting our relationship with God. So that made me kind of think or, or kind of rethink. I, I, I always, I, I always change what I do during Lent. I don't know why. I think maybe I pick something too hard or too easy, but then I'm like, oh, I need to adjust and do this or whatever. But um, this is supposed to be about fasting. But anyway, I wanted to um, talk about, you know, doing something, selecting something for Lent that's not just completely arbitrary because I think I've done that before. Like, I'm just going to give up chocolate, but I don't eat chocolate a lot. Actually, I do eat chocolate a lot, but um, so that would be hard for me to give up. But um, at the time when I'd give up sweets, I wasn't like that big of a sweet eater. So that was something that everybody would do. And so I did that, but it really was kind of arbitrary because I wasn't really that into sweets. So I guess my point with this is that you really need to pick something to do for Lent or to give up at Lent, during Lent, that isn't arbitrary. That's something that really is going to get you closer to God because that's the whole purpose. And then the fasting, um, the reason Catholics fast during Lent for 40 days is, be, is to kind of emulate Jesus when Jesus went into the desert 
for 40 days to fast and the reason he did that was because he was getting ready to start his public ministry and so he went into the desert to fast he did not eat for 40 days and that was when the devil went there and tried to tempt him in these various ways and the other reason we fast is that it gets us closer to God and it's also kind of a way of renewing our baptism because at the very end of Lent when we get to Easter we're going to renew our baptismal promises and so that's really a big part of why we fast um, we do it because Jesus fasted and we also were fasting as a as a way of repentance and really kind of returning our life back to God because you know let's be honest we get sloppy you know we get we get our spirituality gets kind of sloppy and I've kind of been reevaluating my own and feeling realizing you know I, I've, I've kind of been a slacker you know and so that's why I love Lent and Advent and other um, uh, times of the year where the, you really are focusing on you know getting getting your act together so I always need that so um, oh, and the other thing about fasting that I wanted to mention was that it's in Mark 9.29 and Jesus was with the apostles and Jesus was telling the apostles that sometimes certain demons cannot be cast out unless you are fasting. They cannot be cast out unless you have prayer and fasting, those two things together. And I know Father Al talks about uh, in the, the um, encyclical, an encyclical is a papal document, um, and this one was by um, Pope John Paul II, or St. Jo Pope John Paul the Great, Second, the Second the Great, I don't, know how to, I don't know how to say that, but anyway, um, John Paul II, uh, in the Gospel of Life, it's a section 100, he talks about the culture of death. Uh, John Paul II and in that document in that in section 100 he also talks about like you know with the evils of abortion and a lot of the evils in our day right now that the only way um, that abortion is going to be ended the only way some of these evils are going to be ended in our culture is through prayer and fasting and that's why not only is it really important to do that during Lent but it's really important to do it all the time because there's some really bad stuff going on in our culture. Now obviously there's some really good stuff going on too, uh, but there's a lot of bad stuff. So that's why pray, prayer and fasting is really, really important. And um, I will get back to you to let you know how my fasting is going. I, I, it's so funny, I was telling my husband that I was going to be you know, trying to do some other things for Lent, try to kick it up a notch. And I said, you know, boy, I don't know what I'm going to do if I'm fasting. I'm like, I'll just make another video. You know, if I, instead of going to the refrigerator, I'll just make another video. So we'll see how many videos I can put out. I'm, I'm going to try to do one a day. Um, so when I'm not eating, I'm going to be making videos. So that's, that's going to be my replacement thing. Um, anyway, um, that's what I've got today. Um, please like, comment, and subscribe. I'd really like to know, by the way, what you're doing for Lent. Uh, it can be, I mean, it's whatever God, you know, wants you to do or whatever you think God might be calling you to or whatever um, would be helpful for you. I'm going to be trying to limit my intake of food uh, throughout Lent and be a lot more conscientious of it because I think when you take away food, the whole idea is to get closer to God. And some people live to eat that's me some people eat to live that's what I was gonna say some people eat to live I live to eat so uh, limiting food <laughs> is gonna be really 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 challenging for me but I'm gonna do it and every time I'm hungry like I said I'm gonna make a video so I might have like boatloads of video so we'll see okay I'm back I actually forgot to say something about fasting I, this was supposed to be tips on fasting but I actually forgot all my tips but um, this is not this is not going very well okay so the tip that I wanted to give you 
about fasting and this is what I think is going to really motivate me. I guess to make fasting meaningful, to make it much more meaningful. Obviously, it's a way to really return, you know, return to God. I said that. But fast, I mean, I'm sure you can think of, I mean, for me, what I'm going to do is I'm going to fast for like a specific purpose. For instance, and that's what Father Al was mentioning, that it's really good if you fast for a specific purpose. Like I actually have four purposes I wrote down on my little piece of paper. I'm just very, I have to have, I have all these, I have all these lists all over the place. If you could see, like, like my office looks really neat. Yeah, and it is. But on this side of my office, it's completely trash. And sometime, one of these times I'll do like a behind the scenes at All About the Grace and you can see how trash this side of my office is. It's, I've got like papers all over the place. But the tip that I wanted to um, give you with fasting that I think is going to help me a lot to make it a much more meaningful is to fast for a specific purpose. Think about, for instance, one, one, one purpose would be you want an end to abortion. So you fast specifically for babies that are not going to be aborted. Okay, so that's one thing. And I, I, I have a lot of friends that are very, very passionate about the pro-life issue. So that's something that they probably are already doing as their regular in their regular life. But um, think about, I'm sure you all know somebody that you love that is not going to church anymore, for instance. Or someone that you love that is like hates God or that is angry at God or something along those lines. Or you know someone, uh, someone you love is in a bad place like maybe they have cancer or maybe they um, things aren't going too well in their life for whatever reason you can fast for them you know fast for someone's salvation fast for someone who needs healing whether that's emotional healing or physical healing I mean we all know people that um, need help and so I think I know for myself that I think it will make fasting easier if I can really connect it to something that I really love or someone that I really love or some issue that I really care about that um, you know to pray and fast for an end to abortion or to pray and fast um, for loved ones who might be suffering from cancer or maybe who have um, for someone who has like an opioid addiction, that's really um, prevalent in our culture right now. Or just, it could just be for anybody who had. Maybe it's not someone you know. But I just wanted to offer that suggestion for those who are going to be fasting um, in some way during Lent. Just to make it that much more meaningful as if you fast for a specific person or for an end to something that's really you know bad in our culture like it could even be you know for fast for world peace you know fast for um, I mean you can come up with a hundred different ideas to um, or whatever whatever is important to you you can fast for that specific reason um, so that's just another idea I have anyway um, thanks for watching God bless see you next time bye bye